Welcome back to Only Analog, this is episode 13 and today we have our Canon X, he has the QL25 and I just have the standard Canon X. This actually belonged to Josh in the beginning um, and then Josh, he didn't really want a part of it but I managed to get off of him. <laughs> um, Swindled me for it. <laughs> Basically we're going to just walk around Hastings today and just take a few shots and compare the images between the, the two models. So in January 1961, Canon actually introduced these cameras as a sort of consumer-friendly 35mm rangefinder, um, sort of aside from their professional range. They produced a number of different Canonets throughout the 50 years that these were in production. Um, so as Tom said, Tom's got the, uh, I think it's just the Canonet, and this is the QL25. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the sort of differences between these two cameras. You can pick these up fairly cheap. I mean, for a rangefinder, they're still looked at today as quite a yeah, good. quite a well-respected rangefinder. The lens quality in them is very is very good. Um, I've sh I shot this in a previous video. And I took a picture of an old uh, abandoned car, and the image come out stunning. And I I had to go back and double check that I actually took it with this camera. They have very short throw, so it's very quick to like line up the shot. Um, it's got a little uh, square patch inside, which like you line up and then you take the shot. Um, Josh's is, is the same, basically. This one's pretty unique because it's got the winder on the bottom, so you advance the camera like that. And it also has the um, battery, so it doesn't require a battery. It's got the selenium cells in it, so that when you actually take the shot, it has got a built-in um, light meter. So yeah, it's a very versatile camera for the age. For the age of it, it's, it's, it was pretty good, yeah, you know what I mean? And another thing to mention is, if you are going to pick one of these cameras up, you do want to sort of, if you're picking one up from eBay or, you know, an antique camera shop, you want to ask about the cells, because um, if they're exposed to light for too long, they will stop working. Um, so, you know, if you are interested in grabbing one of these, just make sure that the cells are still in working order for your light meter to sort of read. Um, also, mine was damaged when I got mine. It should have been all in working order, but mine was damaged in the post, and my... Uh, my patch for my um, focusing, what do, you, what do you call it, the focusing square for the rangefinder yeah. has come out of um, come out of line slightly so <laughs> sometimes I do have to shake it around a bit just to get that little patch back. Looking at the images, looking back from the images, you've done a, a good job. At, yeah, uh, yeah, I think even though throughout the day job. I was getting a little bit frustrated with it and it does, you know, it is a bit of an off put but they are great cameras and I think that just shows that even, you know, with the struggles that they still take some, some really great images so they're definitely Definitely a strong contender for one to just pop in the bag every time you're going out and just doing a little shoot and you want to take something yeah. sort of small and compact for the day. Um, they're definitely a great option. If you come along, if, you want, if you've made it this far into our boring introduction, uh, come along, come down, come with us, grab a cup of tea. Without further ado, get straight into the video.
so we hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I hope that maybe, you know, this has inspired you to pay, maybe pick one of these kind of nets up. Or even if you've got one hanging around in the loft, get it out, put a roll of film for it, see if it still works. Uh, thanks for joining us today and we'll see you again in the next one. Peace.